Hi guys, Chris with Miners Leisure World here. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on how to properly winterize your camper. Uh, just keep in mind that not all campers are the exact same. Uh, there is some differences. Uh, this one is a pretty general uh, camper. Uh, it's easy, so I'll just give you a quick rundown of how it's going to go. Um, first thing you want to do, find your hot water heater on the outside of your camper because you want to bypass your hot water heater. Easiest way to know where you bypass your hot water heater is, is to find it on the outside of the camper. In this model, the hot water heater is in the back, in the bathroom. Um, it's quite simple. This one's got a drawer. Some you might have to take a couple screws out to access the back of the hot water heater. Uh, this one's just got a single valve system. Some have three valves on them. Uh, the valve is just behind here, so I have turned it up. So it's, it's hard to see, um, but the hot water heater is now bypassed. This hot water heater takes an inch and a sixteenth uh, socket to get the anode rod out. Make sure you have the pressure off of it first with your PT valve. Take your anode rod out. There's no water in this one, but of course water will come out. So as you can see, I've got a long hose coming out to my antifreeze jug. Uh, this model does not have a separate antifreeze hose. So all you have to do is take off the suction side of your pump on the inside, screw another hose on with no end on it that you can put directly into your antifreeze jug. What I like to do is come to the tap that is farthest away from the pump. Uh, then by the time you're done this one tap, majority of the water will be all out of all of the lines and it'll be just quick, easy winterized from the rest on out. So just do your hot first until it's good and pink, close it, and then do the cold water tap just till it's nice and pink. Make sure you do all your taps, um, cold and hot, until everything's pink out of them. Um, it's always best to take the ends off of your outside shower or inside shower too and uh, just put them in a bag or you can take them in the house, whatever you want. And the toilet is super important to do. Um, once again, nice and pink. Make sure you open the toilet so some goes into the tanks as well, uh, but you always want to leave a little bit in the toilet just to keep your seals moist for the winter time. Most kitchens will have a double sink, so if you do the hot water in one sink, Make sure you move the tap to the other sink and do the cold water because that way antifreeze will be throughout all your pee traps. If you have leftover antifreeze, just shut your pump off, take your antifreeze jug and just dump some down the, the sinks just to make sure the pee trap's nice and full antifreeze. And this is where the low point drains are located on this trailer. So it's always nice, these ones have a quarter turn valve. So it's always nice to just give them a turn, uh, make sure all the water's out of the lines and it's good and pink there, then they're not gonna freeze and bust in the winter time. Last but not least, your city water connection. Uh, to get it winterized properly, it's real simple. All you're gonna do is, is uh, pull the screen and uh, gasket out and just push on it a little bit. All the water will come out, it'll be pink there, then you know you're not gonna wreck anything in the winter. Now, of course, before you start, uh, you wanna make sure that your tanks are completely empty. Uh, there's no sewage or gray water left in them. Uh, drain your fresh water tank. Uh, you can just leave that open all winter long, then if no uh, water condensation is not gonna pile in the low area. And as for your gate valves, if they're completely dry, I will just leave them closed. And if there is any leftover liquid in them, it's going to mix with the antifreeze. It's not going to freeze solid and hard. And uh, it'll just stay slush and it won't wreck your gate valves for the winter time. Okay, when you're all done winterizing, uh, your battery will be located on the front of your trailer on a travel trailer. Uh, fifth wheels will probably be in the side compartment. Um, if you have a battery disconnect, it's always good to shut that off. But that's never the way to shut your battery off 100%. It's always best to just take both posts off. And if you have a spot inside to keep it warm for the winter time, take your battery inside up. Otherwise, it'll just be completely dead. Uh, after you've done winterizing, it's always good to just inspect your slide seals. Make sure there's no rips or tears in them. Uh, there is a lubricant you can put on that protects them from uh, the sun's UV rays and stuff like that. It keeps them moist so they don't dry out. Uh, while you're at it, you might as well get on the roof. Check your lap seals out around all your vents. Uh, check all your silicones around your windows and stuff like that. That's just order maintenance. Uh, it's, it's easy, it's hassle-free, and it saves you a lot of trouble in, in the end of things. This has been a general guide on how to winterize a camper. Uh, not all RVs are the exact same. Uh, just know that uh, any RVs not winterized by us, our Miners Leisure World, we are not responsible for. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please call us.